But it's flat like this, and this is a straight line. Okay, we're gonna move on down, take care of the rest of this. I won't be back on camera until I finish this out and we're ready to do the curve on the other side. Now we have the center of the front right here, which you uh, now know goes counterclockwise instead of clockwise like my usual. Anyway, the center line. And this is the beginning of the blade. As you can see, I've already sanded it and done it real nice. Now, the blade starts here. First stage, second stage. Now from here where my thumbnail is, all the way to here, is 5 eighths of an inch. As you notice when I get up here, I'm going to have one fat venturi curve. And it's going to create drag. So 5 eighths of an inch from here, we put a mark. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a line from here all the way on down to here. And we're going to do the same thing we did on this side, back here. And then we're going to do the same from here down to here. And then we're going to get into doing the Venturi curve. Okay, the back side of a hacksaw blade will do nicely. There we go. Get it set up. The more exact you make this, the better off you are because you've got to make sure it balances. Well, I've already got my mark here. All I have to do is draw it to the edge of the board. Now, next thing I want to do is I want to draw a line where I've got the hole and if you tried to divide this up into thirds and you'll see what those marks are for that's uh, basically to set up your curve our full measurement it's just under three and a half which is three and three and three eighths so I'd say one and one eighth which that mark lines up pretty good and two and one quarter I did pretty good I don't need this mark just this one good way to draw a line like this find out where you need to start your line if you hold your finger hold your deal like this these two fingers should ride the side of the board yep, and just freeze your hand and just draw it straight on down the board avoiding splinters and while you do that don't change the angle of your hand like going like this or like this you keep your hand exactly straight and I'm going to draw where my curve should stop I'm going to do the same thing on the other side we're going to draw one and one eighth right here yep that's a good mark and we should start from here looks good halfway between that This one doesn't have to be exact because basically you're not going to be measuring up to this line. Ballpark is pretty good. You're going to be carving that line completely off. Okay. Halfway between it here get the point on it good job Bob and finish out the rest and watch it as I go down because my blade tapers and then I'm gonna do the other side
and we're done with that one. A little wide lined. It's okay. I am ready to start taking this file and I'm going to do it all with the file. Now if you look at what we started with, this is the back side. You're looking at the two lines we just got done drawing. And I redrew the lines after I carved it all out and set it down. Same process as the other side. I'm not going to bore you with the same steps over and over. Now all we got to do is make the round. Okay, I want to show you something. People want to know what these lines are for. This one and this one we're going to cut out between. Right here is the shape that we're supposed to have. So now I'm going to explain all this to you where you can understand it. It's, uh, I guess I have to leave this down to here. All right. Now, the height of the Venturi curve at the peak should be one sixth of an in, uh, one sixth of the total distance from the front to the back of the blade, and the peak of it should be at one third from the trailing edge. So, if we've got one, I mean, I'm sorry, three and three and three eighths, then. One and one eighth is one third back, and actually ours is going to be about five eighths thick. Now, in order to cut this, I went ahead and drew this diagram. I hope it shows up well. This is this line. This is this line. This is this line. Now, we're going to look at it. I'm going to cut between this line and this line like this first and then from this little center spot right here between these where I've got a flat edge dead center of that I'm going to cut back to here and then from there down to here and then I'm going to round off again and we will wind up with this so it's from here to here then here to here then here to here and then here and you do this uniformly on both sides at the same time when you do it and you go back and forth, you go ahead and first you cut this on the, on both sides, then you cut this on both both ends of your blade, then this on both ends of your blade, and then you do this. And everything you've done all the way through your prop has been the same on both sides. Nine times out of ten it balances when you're done. And you won't have to you won't have to balance it. What you do on one side, you do to the other immediately afterward in the same technique. Okay, well, what I've been doing is taking this first edge off. I've already, this is the second side. Anyway, I've been taking this edge off. Take the rounded side of the file, put your thumb up against it, drag it backwards once, or twice, and then it really bites in pretty quick. Going through some hardwood there, and what I want to do, I want to leave the green line itself on both sides. That way, I have a standard of consistency. And I'll do the same. I'm fixing to get into some bad wood over here. good because I'd rather have it done anyway. <laughs> 